one human family. Jupiter, one human family. Saturn's rings, one human family. Kuiper belt, nope, too fast. Neptune, yep, that's right. Uranus. Pluto. Planet Nine. Or Cloud. That's the Kuiper Belt. And beyond. And beyond. Gimbal. Hi, Gimbal. Greetings and salutations. It takes practice to get the, the map of the solar system down pat. Oh, have I introduced myself yet? Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Mongo. That's me, pop, 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 pow. Mike Mongo's Astronaut Adventures. And I know who you are. You're an astronaut student. You're a person who's getting ready to live, work, and play in space. You know, we call that an, a human heir. A human heir, a person who's getting ready to live, work, and play in space. Oh, my great Google. Technical difficulties are an interesting thing about the future. I wonder if they had technical difficulties in the past. I'm sure that there were times that people were working on the farm and they had to get the tractor working and they had technical difficulties. And uh, I got a digital watch. Back in the day, watches were mechanical. And so watches could have mechanical technical difficulties. And people, there used to be watch repair people all over the place. We used to have people whose jobs was to repair watches. In the same way, we used to have television repair people. And we don't really do that anymore, though I know how to, te- I know how to repair televisions. And I think that if you can repair a television or if you can repair things, you're always going to find really interesting and good work to do. That's one of the reasons I like uh, uh, mechanical engineers. Mechanical, engineer, mechanical engineers are always able to fix things. Good Morgan. Guten Morgen, how are you? I hope you're well. I hope today is going really well. I want you to know it's going pretty well over here. And I got a good reason. I got a good reason to tell you why it's going well. So, you know how we do the Johnny... Oh, oh, hi, how you doing? Wow, look at you over there. Hi, look at you today. You look terrific. Yes, I don't care if you just woke up. I don't care if you've been up for a long time and you just got back from a run or playing outside. I don't care if you are covered in mud and dirt from going out and having fun and doing something super exciting adventure. I don't care if you're covered in monkey grease. I don't care. I don't care if you are uh, laying on your on your I don't care if you're standing on your head. You look terrific. I can tell that. I look deeper. I look deeper than right here. I look right here. And you look great. You look great. Thanks for looking great. You feel great. I'm, I'm, I'm proud. I'm honored that you're here. I'm proud of you for making the decision to be, be here too. Because, you know, we're working on your future. And not just your future. Your future is going to determine the future of, the, of Earth. You know what we said last week? Solving for space is solving for Earth. So the stuff we're working about, working on and talking about here, the stuff we're working on and talking about here really makes a big difference. That's the thing. And we can jibber jabber the entire time and we can have fun and we can goof around. But the fact of the matter is this, we're only making it fun because it's important. If it was slack and unimportant, then it wouldn't even matter if we were here. And that doesn't, ha- it doesn't feel like that. It feels like your being here and my being here is really important. So, like I said, I'm honored that you're here and I'm proud of you for being here. Not only are you determining your future, you're determining the future of everything. You're participating. And you don't have to participate. Life is going to go on whether you choose to participate or not. Excuse me, where, whether a person, you're clearly participating. Whether a person chooses to participate or not, life is just going to continue on. That's an important distinction. I always tell people, life's going to work out. It pretty much just does. You really don't have to do anything. It just does. And then there's those of us who make a choice to activate. And it gets amazing. And that's why you're here. You're one of those catalyzers. You're a person who's catalyzing. You're, you're catalyzing the future and you're catalyzing reality. 
See, all of this thing, as awesome as stuff is, even this, even this iPhone that I'm using to communicate with you, even this gimbal robot that's following me around everywhere, gimbal over here, pow, pow, pow. Even as amazing as that is, it gets even better. Oh, can I show you something cool? Can I show you something cool? We got some cool stuff to talk about. Johnny Alpacine Space had a major, major breakthrough this weekend. Look at this. Check it out. Look at that. Thank you, Redbubble. Oh, wow. How cool is that? That's our new store. We have a new store with the Human Airs insignia. How awesome is that, right? Look, I told you there's changes taking place in here. <laughs> It really changes the feel of the place. There's the Hubble telescope. There's the ultra deep. Uh, uh, another thing that I ordered online, like ultra deep field image had made. And there's the, uh, the human air symbol. Now we're represented. Look, the human air symbol is, is, is masterfully important. It is a big deal. And you know how big, big, and you know how much I love writing and drawing. Like, what's the point of, of just even being a grown-up if you can't have the fun of drawing? And the secret to drawing is just to do it. It's not like I came perfect when it comes to drawing. I just practiced and I became confident. Confident is even better than perfect. Confident, confident means you're just going to have fun doing whatever you're doing. The human error symbol. Remember, human airs, next generation of space explorers. It's human, pump, and then nares. Like million nares and legion nares. Human airs. Human airs. That's the human airs logo. That's your logo. You're a human air. That's your logo. You can use it anytime you want. Feel free. Okay? That's the human airs logo. You, you, you represent it well. This is what we're doing here. Cool. So, guess what we're talking about today? We're talking about the future. We're talking about make the world a better place. We're talking about that important stuff. And if you have any, any question about any of that stuff, go ahead and go to last week's episode, episode 41. And that is, that is the um, Here's the Plan episode. And it explains it all really clearly. And, and then, and then after we did that episode, it's like the universe just heard and said, I, I, I universe am going to respond to you human heirs and give you a, a, a sign, <laughs> a reason to be encouraged. What's going on with the, uh, with the reconnecting thing that's happening here? Reconnected, reconnected, reconnected. A reason, uh, testing, testing, one, two, three, is this thing on? Can you hear me? A reason to be encouraged. A reason to be encouraged. That means that the work that you're doing is paying off. And here's an example of that. Here is what I'm talking about. So, wow. Our friend, our new friend, Dr. Alex Myers, is now germinating our apple seeds that went up to space aboard United Launch Alliance's mated Atlas V and Star Starliner spaceship, the Boeing Starliner spaceship. So mated means they put it together like Lego. So they had a giant rocket. And then they put, and then we put the spacecraft on top of that. The spacecraft we put on top of that is the Boeing UL, excuse me, the Boeing Starliner. Look, I got the stuff right here. Look, here's the ULI sticker. Look how cool that is. Atlas V Starliner. You can have one of these. I have some. Just, just message me on Instagram. If you haven't subscribed go, uh, on YouTube, subscribe. Uh, if you want a, uh, one of these super sweet United Launch Alliance Atlas V Starliner stickers, just message me at Mike Mongo Astronaut Teacher on Instagram. Pop pow, pow, pow. And if you're a grown up who loves what we're doing, you can go to MikeMongo.com and click on Buy Mike a Tea. And uh, that's super, very much appreciated. I mean, we, we, we have to, we figure, we're figuring out how to pay for this whole thing. We're 42 episodes deep into this. And we're 42 episodes deep into this, yo. You know, I grew up on hip hop. I'm 55 today, but I grew up on hip hop, pop, pop, pow. 
So what I was explaining is that Dr. Alex Myers at the University of Ohio got our apple seeds that went up to space and, and orbited the planet 33 times. And these seeds were the, these seeds are apple seeds from the original, the last remaining apple tree planted by Johnny Appleseed. Oh my Google, are we, ta- are we telling the Johnny Appleseed in space story today? I think we are. And for good reason. Look, let's get some names. Let's get some names into this mix, shall we? You know how much I love to write. You know how much I love to draw. Gimbal, I almost lost you there, buddy. Let's see. I don't know what the color of uh, University of Ohio is. Um, I can imagine it being green. And since it's, uh, since what we're talking about is plants. So here's who has the seeds. Dr. Alex Myers. At, at University of Ohio. You know, I see a lot of red in, um, in, in Ohio, so I don't know. I don't know. University of Ohio. Okay? And then, um, you know, our friends over at Franklin University and and uh, Urbana University, which is which now closed because of the pandemic, uh, our our ally, Doctor Christopher Washington, is is uh, who enabled this whole mission. And then so then we started this last year. Tori Bruno at United Launch Alliance uh, and Boeing Spa- and Boeing Space um, worked together to get our seeds up to space. We, our sp- seeds got to space. We brought them back. They delivered them to us. We got the most amazing things. Oh my Google, you guys, into the wardrobe, um, into the special drawer that has the ULA stuff, out of the wardrobe. Look at this, look how cool that is from United Launch Alliance. We just got this, here look. I'll show you. Baka, baka. So here's this. And then this has a certificate of authenticity, CST 100, orbital flight test, signed by John Mulholland, Vice President, Program Manager, and Chris Ferguson, the Boeing astronaut. And this over here is signed by Tori. This is the uh, orbital flight test flown seed certificate of authenticity. This cargo flew in space aboard the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket that carried Boeing CST-100 Starliner spacecraft on December 20th at 6.36 a.m. I was there. Oh my gosh, that was fun. My friend Janet Carrico was there too. She was chief of staff at NASA. And all these folks, oh, so good. This launch marked the 81st launch of an Atlas V rocket and ULA's 136th successful launch. The Starliner received a precise orbital injection and continued to orbit the Earth 33 times and cover a total distance of 854,361 miles. Woo! And look, there's Tori Bruno's signature, and he draws a little robot in, I mean, excuse me, a spaceship in his signature. Come on. How awesome is that? This is his real signature. This makes me so happy. Oh, my Google. So, Paco. So that's the, that's the story. Look, this is the, there, I think there's, yeah, these, these are the most awesome things. So like, that makes me really happy. I got this in the mail, um, last week. And then the, uh, seeds got over to Dr. Alex Myers at university of Ohio. And now he posted about it on Twitter and everybody is excited. Oh, wow. People are excited. You know, it's just some good news and some exciting stuff because the future is amazing and awesome. It's a reminder of that. And we are, and he, as a space botanist, remember how I say there's all kinds of space jobs and pretty much anything you you can think of doing on earth, you're going to be able to do in space. Remember how I say that? Space botanist. Dr. Alex Myers is a space botanist. He's done work with NASA. And so he is germinating our Johnny Appleseed space apple seeds 
to turn them into Johnny Appleseeds germinating so they propagate and they grow into Johnny Appleseed space apple trees. And then we will plant those in the state of Ohio where Johnny Appleseed actually went through in the 1800s and planted apple trees. And apples are a big, a big part of Ohio. Apples are a big part of Indiana. Apples are a big part. Apples, he planted all these, all these trees and it enabled people to have homes and territories in all of this. He, he brought fruit trees to places that didn't have food growing on the land. And he would, and like, I got to tell you this about Johnny Appleseed because we have these pioneers and especially today we have all these pioneers who have issues with other people or had issues because it was so long ago. Johnny Appleseed wasn't one of those people. Johnny Appleseed got along with people who were women, got along with people who are black, got along with people who are Native American. Tribes, whole tribes described their relationship with John Chapman, Johnny Appleseed. His, his uh, birth name was Johnny John Chapman, but he went by and we know him famously as Johnny Appleseed and he planted trees and he was a vegetarian and uh, he didn't hurt animals and he helped animals and he loved kids. He worked with young students in all the cities he went to. Gosh, you know, we have this idea of him wearing a um, tin pan on his head and I had a dream once with Johnny Appleseed because, you know, dreaming is important. And if you're doing something that's important to you, you're going to dream about it. And this is true. And he showed up in my dream and he showed me the reason he wore this hat was to make students laugh and to hold their attention so he caught, could talk to them about his adventures in planting. How about that? We are literally the nation we are. The United States is the nation we, it is today because of the work of Johnny Appleseed. And we are carrying that mission forward in the future by bringing Johnny Appleseed, ap apple, apple tree, apple seeds, by being, bringing Johnny Apple tree, by bringing Johnny Appleseed, apple seeds, there we go, that's a mouthful, as we say when it's a mouthful, Johnny Appleseed, apple seeds, it, up to space, bringing them back down, and now Dr. Alex Myers is germinating them, which means getting them to sprout Hey, remember the um, remember the the space um, blackberries we worked to grow, and have not worked at doing yet. Like he's really good at this, and I, I'm an amateur. And and so here's our here's uh, our uh, examples of our space with some cat hair on it. Uh, space blackberries. These have not been the space, but we were planning them to get them to grow in the way that that uh, here. Hold on. And the way that we would plant them and get them to grow it with caution and consideration on the space shuttle, or excuse me, on the space station or in outer space or on the moon. And I haven't been great at it yet. And so this is the second time that I have not been great at it. And yet we are going to continue on in here. And let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Super exciting over here. Look. Here is a record of the times that we have done it so far, okay? So here is, we first, we first did it May 22nd. That one didn't work out. That one got mold. June 20, not on the inside, but in the, in the soil. And as I explained, we can't have mold in the soil on space stations because that, that could create health conditions that are hazardous to space explorers like you're going to be when you grow up. Grow up more. And so then June 26, we did our second round. That's the one that's in the in the dirt outside that I just showed you, and they're not working. <laughs> I've done everything. And I think that I I think that the problem with those ones is that is that the uh the drainage isn't right in those plastic dishes and the soil wasn't deep enough. So we're gonna change that up with these with this new batch that we put into we're we we're germinating in the same way that Dr. Myers is germinating, well, he'll he'll probably do it in, in a way that he's probably got a lab and everything. So we're doing it like you can do it at your house. This side is strawberries. These are seeds that I took off strawberries. And this side is raspberries. And these are seeds I took off raspberries. And then I soaked a napkin. And then I've got it in here. I've got it open. And so it's still wet doesn't it has air to circulate so it doesn't mold or mildew doesn't show up in there and uh today is the 22nd so it's about a week ago 
uh, that we put these in there and maybe in another few days they'll sprout and we will put them in soil. And they smell good, by the way. So that, those are, uh, those are what we're going to, those are how we're doing it. And that is, that is, baka baka. Baka baka. that's kind of what Dr. Myers is doing with the, with the, baka baka. with the seeds at, at, uh, with the Johnny Appleseed, Appleseeds that he has had delivered to him from United Launch Alliance that they got from the Boeing Starliner spaceship that went to space and circled the planet. He is germinating the apple seeds that he got that went to space. And that is super cool. Holy moly, Jeff Spicoli. Bucka, bucka. Now, what are we gonna do with these? Good question. So there's, there's 10 seeds. There's 10 seeds. What are we gonna do with them? We're gonna germinate them. It is the summertime. Hopefully we'll have them germinated. I mean, we'll see what happens. We gotta keep track of it. One of the things we get to do is write down and see how the different, they look great. Will space have affected the, how these seeds sprout? There's radiation in space, for instance. How well shielded were they? They were in a brand new spaceship built by Boeing, which is one of the top builders. And so there's a pretty good chance that they're very safe from the radiation that, that is, that's uh, outside, the, outside the atmosphere, like the atmosphere keeps the radiation from just piling on the planet because the radiation from the sun is just hitting us, but our atmosphere is this amazing filter because uh, the, the universe is a pretty fantastic place like that. And so the seeds are probably pretty well protected. I, I don't know. You know what? Um, in comic books, for instance, when people eat seeds that have been down in space, they get superpowers. So there's that. Not that I anticipate that that's going to happen. However, there's only one way to find out, right? And that is to sprout the seeds and then have them grow into apple trees. Johnny Appleseed Space Apple Trees. And then have Johnny Apples, have apples from the Johnny Appleseed Space Apple Trees. So space apples, this is just too much. It's just like, and so then those apples, we're gonna get those, we're gonna, he, uh, Dr. Myers is growing, is sprouting the seeds, and then we're gonna grow the seeds in the trees, and then we'll plant the trees in schoolyards. This is where you come in. And guess what? Oh my God, this is the most, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this is the most exciting part. Check it out. The CST-100, the Starliner is going to be a CST-200. There's going to be another mission. And I think they're going to let, I think they're going to put more of our seeds on there because they like the science of the project. You know, United Launch Alliance does a lot of good stuff for students and everything. So they, they have been, they, they, they have a whole plan of how this, how this came about, how, how this came about. We'll have to get Julie on from United Launch Alliance and she can, she can explain. It was, it's really cool how it all, how it all came together. And I also get to thank, um, the National Space Society who played a role in, in making this happen at, and the uh, International Space Development Conference. And, uh, oh yeah, my buddy Phil Metzger, uh, Dr. Metzger at University of Central Florida. And then speaking of students, you know what? Um, I was in Ohio doing an intern, excuse me, doing a, um, not internship, a, um, residency at Urbana University this past fall when the seeds got shipped from Ohio to Orlando where a student named Andy Hatch, who I've been working with since he's eight and he's like, he's like 22 now. And he is, he got the seeds and carried them to Cape Canaveral. He was, he has, he has, he got a mission patch. He gets a mission patch for doing this. Like that's, that's the fun part about being involved in these space missions. He took the time to make this happen and you can be, you can be involved in a space mission. Like I said, if you, if you message me on Instagram at Mike Mongo astronaut teacher, then I will send you, I will send you a United Launch Alliance Starliner Delta five, uh, uh, sticker. And, uh, and we have Johnny Appleseed. Oh, look at this mission patch. First of all, being part of the mission, I got this. It's called a challenge coin. This is the mission success. One launch at a time, United Launch Alliance. Let's see if we got the light right. 
So there you go. There's that. I haven't taken it out of the sleeve yet, but it's pretty cool. So there's, there's what it looks like. This is a big metal coin. Super nice. Got this. From the mission. Where'd it go? Ah, here it is, on top of my book. Look at that. Embroidered mission patch. United Launch Alliance Boeing, see right there? And then there's the Starliner on top of the Atlas V. That's the Atlas V right there. Atlas V Starliner. And then it says, it says, returning astronauts to space from US soil. And that is a larger mission. It's not just like a competition. It's like where everybody's working on it. That's the International Space Station. And it's big. It's as big as a, as a as a football field. So this looks this is flying away or around the International Space Station up to space. So that's cool, right? I got that mission patch for being part of this. Well, check this out. Um, I have got a <laughs> Johnny Appleseed in space mission patch. Look at that. So the, the mission is he carries the apple to space, then to the moon, and then on to Mars. And there's Earth. And it says Chapman, because that's John Chapman's in the United Launch Alliance. And then it says uh, it, it's got uh, uh, that super sweet Earth right here. There's the astronaut helmet. This is John Chapman, who is Johnny Appleseed. That's his real name. Look at that. Wow. Who wants one of these? Everybody. Yeah, and so then after we, yeah, we're gonna do a Kickstarter. We gotta figure a way to fund this because there's a, this project's turned into a big deal. And, uh, and today it's just blown up on Twitter, for instance. Oh my Google, Alex Myers is really blasting it up and all of these people. It just shows what we can do, what we can accomplish when we work together and put our minds to it. Like these, this was a great, a great thing. A lot of people didn't even know Johnny Appleseed's a real person. And, and certainly no one knew that the last that there's a living apple tree planted by Johnny Appleseed. One last tree remaining that we know of, uh, verified by uh, U.S. Uh, Historic Trees and Forestry, I believe it's called. And uh, it's in Nova, Ohio. And I went to it and I saw it and the family introduced me to it. I mean, it was so great. Oh, man, that was so nice of them. And I'm friends with them now, and, and uh, Dr. Washington was there. We had uh, Ohio Commerce people with us, and we got uh, accommodations. Many good things happened. Many good things can happen, and you get to be a part of it. You're part of this. Uh, send, send a message, and I'll, get, and I'll send you a sticker, and then you can really feel connected. So this is going to be cool. This thing just works out great. And it, I just want you to know the whole thing came about how this all came about was that, oh, I love telling you this. Uh, I, I was, um, um, this is a few years ago, I realized that astronaut Tim Peake for the uh, European Space Agency had brought apple seeds from a lit, the, the apple tree that inspired Sir Isaac Newton to discern the, the, to discern the law of gravity. I don't know if you know the story. Supposedly, an apple hit Sir Isaac Newton on the head, and that's and he started to think about it. He's like, "Oh my gosh, why do apples fall?" He started to think about the the mechanism, the process of why why, why does an apple go down when it falls from a tree instead of up? What does that? What pulls it down? Which we take for granted now is gravity. That's not what we didn't understand before. So that's how he came. He was able to discern to to notice gravity, how gravity functions. And that's where we get the law of gravity from. And so then our theory of gravity, like, yeah, gravity, how, how it, gravity was, I can't say discovered, discerned is definitely the right word. So Sir Isaac Newton discerned gravity as a consequence of an apple falling to the ground. Now, I thought that that was a legend. I thought it was a legend like George Washington cut down a cherry tree. I cannot tell a lie. I thought that was, I thought it was a legend like that. It turns out wasn't exactly a legend. When Sir Isaac Newton was you, when Sir Isaac Newton, one of the most famous scientists in the history of humankind, was 13, he was just in the backyard 
watching, just sitting down, chilling. They chilled in the uh, 1500s and looking at apples falling from a tree and was wondering why are apples falling at 13? He, he thought about this. At 13, they thought about this. See what ideas you can come up with, right? Like as a, as a young student, you can come up with ideas that change the world. So if you thought there was any reason for me, to like, if there's any reason about this show today is about to communicate this to you right now, is the person who discerned the law of gravity was 13 when the, when the idea happened. And how we know this is because Sir Isaac Newton, who was just called Isaac then, told friends later, and those friends wrote it down. Now, the interesting thing is, you know what? This reminds me of when Philo Farnsworth invented television, the idea for television when they were 14, wrote a paper on it for school, the idea, wrote the idea down, then created the television when he was in his, like, 20, when he was 20 years old, and then got sued by RCA for, they said they invented television, and then the teacher came to court and brought the paper that, that a young 14-year-old had written to invent, to invent television. Well, again, same, same sort of deal. We keep records. Grown-ups keep records. Yay, grown-ups. Yay, us. And somebody kept a record of Philo Farnsworth telling them that they, he was inspired to discern the law of gravity, that Isaac was inspired to discern the law of gravity by a falling apple. Now, it probably didn't hit him on the head. It may have. And, and in any case, Isaac saw apples falling and wondered about it. So, get this. Sir Tim Peake, European uh, English astronaut, carried some seeds from that apple tree to the space station. That apple tree was from the 1500s. That apple tree is still alive today, believe it or not. You can go and see it. I couldn't believe it. I, I didn't know that that was a true story. I didn't know that apple trees can live that long, and they can. There's even apples on it still. You can get apple seed from the, from the apple tree that inspired Isaac to figure out, to see and notice gravity. Wow. So what happened after I, after I realized all this, this is that 2012. And then when that happened, I was like, wait a minute, isn't there a famous apple guy or apple situation in the United States that's like that? And I was like, what about this Johnny Appleseed person? Is that a real person? I was 51% sure that Johnny Appleseed was real. Because they always taught us that Johnny Appleseed was real. They, teachers, teachers like me, would teach students like you that Johnny Appleseed is real. And indeed, Johnny Appleseed is real. And so then I was like, well, if the Sir Isaac Newton apple tree is 500 years old, it's still alive, then certainly there's apple trees planted by Johnny Appleseed that are still alive since he turned out to be a real person. And guess what? It's not, un it's not, not, oh, oh, wow. Not only are, is there still one apple tree that Johnny Appleseed himself planted that we know for sure is still alive and that he for sure planted, but all the, it turns out, all the apples, like all the different variations of apples that we got, that we have in the United States, there's so many different good ones. There's a new one called Cosmic Crisp. I'm sure you heard of it. And uh, that, that uh, lasts for a long time that I've always talked about. It should go to space. So, um, all of this came about because there was a person named Johnny Appleseed. This whole U.S. apple industry, all the different varieties of apples came around because Johnny Appleseed went around when he was you. He was 17 when he started and he took his, his 13 year old brother, Nathaniel, maybe 12. And they started walking around the United States when there was bears and wolves and rattlesnakes everywhere. Plus native American people who were here first were not really super happy with what was taking place. So he got to go through and, and meet with some people that were rightfully angry and could have just, but didn't. 
And you know why? Because Johnny Appleseed, John Chapman was actually a decent, cool human being. And they could tell that this was a, a really decent human. That even if bad stuff happens, we don't have to blame everybody for it. And this is true. And so, he planted all these apple seeds. He planted apple seeds. And there were not apple trees in the United States then. And then those apple seeds took root. And this is important, this part, this root part. Because when you plant apple seeds, inside every apple See, there's about 7,000 varieties of apple possible, but generally, usually, crab apples grow, which are okay. People use them to make apple cider. People bake with them. You can eat them. You can get, like, you can get, you can get a stomachache if you too, eat too many, I hear. And I've eaten some, and they're good. And uh, sometimes a very special variety will grow up, a unique tree out of the 7,000 plus varieties that are possible from each seed. And then what we do is we take a, a, a cutting off that tree and jam it into the, the root stock. Like you can cut off the top of an apple tree, take the tree, the uh, cutting from a tree that you like, stick it into the root stock. Uh, that's just called splicing. And that, that tree will grow out of the root stock from that branch that you put into the root stock. It's like you cut the, into the trunk. It, it's amazing. This is actually how we make apples. It's a whole nother story. Trust me, it's amazing. And we would not have that, the whole U.S. apple industry, were it not for this one person, Johnny Appleseed, who also, by planting all of these apple trees, brought food to communities and allowed people to build homes and houses in places there weren't any. And it was amazing. This is a really pivotal key human being. Decent human, good person, kind to children, kind to people, kind to women, fr friendly to, to the people who were here first, um, friends with First Nation people, with whole tribes, which is like a nation of people, like in held high regard. And then did such a great job that one of those trees is still alive today. And I needed all of that information brought into the future. Once I realized it, Y'all, sometimes we have to step up. It became my responsibility to get the word out about Johnny Appleseed and what they have accomplished as a human being, to inspire where we can go in the future. We can criticize anybody for anything, for sure, all of us. And yet there's a great saying, let that person who is without fault cast the first stone, throw the first insult, Make the first criticism. Let the person who has no reason to be, nothing, who cannot be blamed, let the blameless person make the first blame. In other words, nobody can do that because we all have issues. We all have challenges. And yet some of us are actually pretty cool and decent, even though we all have challenges. It just so happens one of those people was Johnny Appleseed, John Chapman. Once I found that out, I investigated, researched, located the actual living apple tree planted by Johnny Appleseed, went to it, uh, worked with, worked with uh, legislators in Ohio to make sure that, that that tree and the family, the Algeo family in Novo, Ohio, got the accommodation for, the, for tending to that tree for nine generations. What a contribution to the state of Ohio and the heritage of the United States which has some high points. There's some good stuff about this place. And if you're in the United States, you're one of them, hopefully. Um, I'm in the United States, so I hope I'm one of them. I work to be. And then uh, I hope to be a good neighbor to the people outside the United States. And uh, hopefully we're working together right now to encourage a future which works out from every, for, for everybody from here right now in, uh, in a <laughs> beautiful spaceship studio in downtown Sherman Oaks, Los Angeles, California. See, the U.S. has contributions. We all have things that we get to be held accountable for. That was a significant beep. And then we all have things that we get to get credit for. And this is one of those things, Johnny Appleseed. We get to get credit for this. This is awesome. So when they found out all this and they did all this work and I met the Algeo family and we got the accommodation from the state of Ohio for their, for their stewardship of this fantastic last remaining known tree 
we got we got seeds. Pam Achenbach helped us, and uh, and uh, and the Johnny Appleseed Museum in Urbana, Ohio, from Urbana University, which was which was a university that was on the property that was that that Johnny Appleseed himself encouraged be donated to be turned into a university. Whew. And then what? And then what? And then what? And then we took this story to United Launch Alliance and we took it to the National Space Society and we took it to Tori Bruno and our friend Phil Metzger help at UCF. And we had all of these people involved, Dr. Washington at Franklin University now Alex Myers, there's so many people involved that have contributed to this, to bring the past into the future, to remind us about what we are capable of, what we are capable of, when you put your mind to it. Johnny Appleseed was a regular human being, just like you and me. And here is the funny thing. So Johnny obviously wore the tin pan on his head, you know, like to, to uh, get kids' attention. Well, guess who does something similar to that? <laughs> How about that? Yet another connection. I want you to be inspired by this. And so I put the work in to make sure that we get these seeds to space so that we can carry on the heritage that Johnny Appleseed created into the future. You know what the goal is? To have Johnny Appleseed moon apple trees. And, you know, I bet Elon Musk would like us to have Johnny Appleseed Martian apple trees. We're carrying this far into the future. And, and my, Tory, my friend Tori Bruno, the, C, the CEO of United Launch Alliance, is like, let's send more seeds up. So we've got, we've got apple seeds that are from these trees that have been spliced and graft, grafted. I said spliced, grafted, regrafted. So all of these Johnny Appleseed apple trees that are growing all over the nation now that have been from grafts of the original tree, planted and growing, and the and and the uh, people who are the the or, who own the orchards of these trees are collecting the seeds for them to go to space. So this project is turning into a real, real space mission, like a real phenomenal space mission. There's important lessons to be had here. Real good stuff. And, it, and more importantly than anything, my friend, paying attention to this right now, you, the future, this is your story. You get to be inspired by this spark and carry it forward into the future and do something at least as amazing as this. If you ever imagine it, that you can't do something or something is too difficult for you, I want you to remember, remember John Chapman, who was 17 when he went out into the wilderness and did it for 60 years of his life, excuse me, 50 years of his life. And his brother Nathaniel, who was 12 when he went out, came back when he was 21, 22, got married, had family, had kids. Into the wilderness, rattlesnakes everywhere. This place used to be rattlesnake kingdom, no joke. Bears, wolves, no Starbucks, no Wi-Fi, no cell phones, no electric light, no gas-powered anything, no engines. At the birth of the nation, do you know that uh, uh, Johnny Appleseed was born in 1774? The Constitution was signed in 1776 and worked until 1854 if I recall correctly. If I recall correctly. And, and we're here today carrying that, that legacy forward. And you're part of this mission. And you're going to carry it forward in a way that I can't even imagine. You're going to do something even better than what I can imagine because that's why you're here. To do the thing that the rest of us can't imagine. It's going to work out for everybody. If anything, if we learned anything from, from, from Johnny Appleseed, it's that scarcity is an illusion. 
We did not have any apples or apple trees in the United States. And Johnny Appleseed planted tens of millions of apple trees in his lifetime. And if Johnny Appleseed can accomplish that starting when they were 17 and their brother and his brother when, when they were 12, then you got this licked. You have all the tools at your disposal. You're going to do something amazing. And in the future, people like me are going to talk about people like you and share your story. And I just get to be part of it by reminding you, by giving you permission to know that. You're going to go up to space and you're going to do whatever you want. You're going to go up to space and you're going to look back down on your on earth and you're going to figure out how to make this place a better place. You're going to go to space. You're going to solve for space to solve for earth. That's our mission. That's what makes you a human heir. This is why this symbol is yours. Because you're amazing. You're amazing. You amaze us. You amaze us. And if anybody around you doesn't see you for as amazing as you are, that's okay. You just keep on going. And remember Johnny Appleseed. You think people didn't laugh, laugh at a 17 year old going around and planting apple trees or a 12 year old when there were no apple trees in dangerous country? If they can do that, imagine what you could accomplish. You're amazing. I look at you and I see the future and it is incredible. There's enough for everybody. Proud of you. Thanks for being here today. Like I said, it's my honor and I'm proud of you. Finally, in the words of our people, <laughs> in the name of Johnny Appleseed. Pow, pow, pow. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Pow, pow, pow.